Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we are taking a look at another watch from Citizen. Now this one is pretty new and a lot of people don't know it even exists. It's reference number BJ7138-04E. And if this one looks vaguely familiar, it probably should, as it's a Citizen Nighthawk. But it's a Nighthawk with some major design tweaks for 2020. When I think of Citizen Eco Drives, the one I always think of is the Nighthawk. Now, there are actually a number of different watches called the Nighthawk, but when I say Nighthawk, I always think of the pilot's watch like we have here. For me, this is an iconic watch from Citizen, as it's a relatively affordable pilot's GMT with an original design. For me, this is the Eco Drive to get, even though it's one I never really did. Now, the Nighthawk has been around for a long, long time. And even though there have been a couple different colorways over the years, for the most part, it's been unchanged. So it was kind of a surprise last year when I was doing some Black Friday shopping and ran across two new versions. Ones that are not only a different colorway, but have a different handset, case, and crown positions. Now, evidently these Nighthawks were released sometime last summer, but given everything that was going on last year, it's not really a big surprise these flew under the radar, pun intended. But as soon as I saw one, I had to pick one up. I've just been holding on to it, waiting to get around to do this review. So without further ado, let's check out this new Nighthawk. The new Nighthawk is listed as being 42 millimeters wide, yet when I actually measure it, it's more like 42 and a half, and that goes out to 45 with its stubby crown. You also have a lug to lug of almost 47 and a total thickness of 12.75. Since the case is one of the differences in this refresh, I'm sure it's not going to be exactly the same, but I think it's pretty close. Which also includes a 22mm lug width and that 200 meters of water resistance. Which is one thing that people love about the Nighthawk. GMT watches are really supposed to be travel watches, so they should be ready for just about anything. Now even though this is a pilot's watch, it's one you don't need to worry about getting wet. The leather strap, on the other hand, is a different story, but that is pretty easy to swap out. Now, from a size perspective, I think the platform here is pretty close to a lot of modern divers, and I think it wears pretty close to that as well. It definitely feels like a 42 and a half, but I think the slightly shorter lug to lug here will help compensate for a variety of wrist sizes. Now, on my 7 inch wrist, it's fairly comfortable, and I think it has a great look. The strap needs a little bit of a break-in period, and the watch does feel a little flat on the back of my wrist, which is something I have noticed with some other Citizen EcoDrive watches, so maybe that's just how they designed the case in the case back. Which brings us to one of the first big changes with this refresh, and that's the case design. The older Nighthawk was a bit roundish and a little minimalistic, whereas this seems more modern and just a little bit more stylish, and especially so when it comes to the lugs where here they are much more pronounced and geometric. The majority of the case has a horizontal brushing. That includes the sides, inside the lugs, and the two front angles of the lugs themselves. There's a flat horizontal edge at the front, and then one that's slightly more angled back before it then hits a polished section on the top. And that polished section is one thing that really brings attention to the angular shape of the lugs. In fact, looking straight down at the watch, all you see is that PVD bezel being held up by four polished legs. Now, the bezel itself is another big change. Rather than the clean stainless version of the original, or maybe the blue version on the Blue Angels one, this one is a black PVD with a twisted knurling on the side, which almost makes it look like a diving bezel, but it is fixed and kind of just there for decoration. Yet looking straight down again, I think it looks really good with the design, as the black framing around the dial and the bezel makes it seem just a little bit larger, which then gives the watch a massive presence for its size. That twisted knurling pattern is something that's also shared with both crowns, which I think helps give the watch a more uniform look. The main crown is signed, but it's not screwed down, and it's also a bit stubbier in this refresh than the original, and it kind of hides within its own crown guards, which on one hand I think gives the watch a more streamlined look, but it does make it a bit harder to pop out and use. Now the crown for the internal bezel has been moved from the 7 o'clock position to the 2, which if you are right handed that should make it a little bit easier to use, but at the same time it's just as stubby as the main crown, which makes it kind of hard to use while it's on your wrist. So kind of one step forward and two steps back, 
and I think if the crowns were just a little bit longer, it would be better overall. When it comes to the crystal, there's nothing really interesting or remarkable about it. It does have AR coating, but it's pretty much just a flat mineral crystal. And for me, I gotta say that is my biggest disappointment when it comes to this watch. Now, the original Nighthawk didn't come with Sapphire, and I think it's worth pointing out that in the past, Citizen typically hasn't given you Sapphire at this price. But times are a-changing, and I have noticed a number of new Citizens in this price range that come with Sapphire. So it's just kind of disappointing that they didn't do that here as well, as that would make a nice upgrade. Now, at the moment, there are two versions of this Nighthawk 2.0. You have the one I have here, and more of a stealth blacked out version. In both of them, the layout is pretty similar to the original, which does include the iconic pilot slide ruler at the edge, yet almost every individual component here has been tweaked in some way. The only two exceptions I've seen is that the date is still a simple cutout, and the GMT is set up the same way. The GMT setup is one of the most recognizable features of the Nighthawk, which includes a double half circle and a double sided hand, and each side of that hand does look like an airplane. Basically, if the white airplane is facing those two semicircles, then just read the white section, and if the yellow airplane is facing it, read the yellow, and that's pretty much it. Now, this particular GMT setup is going to be known as a Traveler's GMT, or as some people refer to it as a true GMT which is where that GMT hand stays fixed and you can independently adjust the hour hand. So typically you would have that GMT hand set for wherever home is or maybe even GMT time, while the hour hand will be set to wherever you are locally. Now the dial itself is this really dark black and it has a pretty subtle sunburst effect. Although I'm not really sure if that's with the dial or maybe the solar cell underneath. On this new version, nothing is applied and that's one big difference. It's all just a rather thick application of paint. The overall design here has also been changed to be a bit more Flieger-like. You have a triangle at the 12, large dashes at the other cardinal points, and large Arabics filling in the rest of the hour indicators. With this change, I think you lose a little bit of depth, but I think it might make it a little bit easier to read. Moving outward, you also have this narrow minute track that's sort of squished in between the Arabics and the raised chapter ring. The raised chapter ring here is really the fixed part of the slide ruler, and that's also another big change. In the original version, the fixed portion of the slide ruler was really just the flatter outer edge of the dial, while the rotating bezel was then angled around the edge of the dial. So here that fixed portion is actually that angled edge that runs around the dial, which then flattens out to the rotating inner bezel at a higher plane. If you look really closely, you'll see a pattern on that rotating bezel which matches the outer bezel, which is kind of a cool touch I didn't see until I looked at these macro shots. For me, this does a couple of things. The first is that I think it adds just a little bit of more visual depth back into the watch. But more importantly, I think it cleans up the dial just a little bit. By creating that small spatial buffer, you physically remove the slide ruler from the time-telling elements of the dial which I think visually makes it a little bit less confusing and might make it easier to use. The hands are also slightly different here. Now they are still sword shaped, but they are a lot narrower than the original. And this is one change I really don't like. I think it makes it look less like a pilot's watch. Although just to play devil's advocate, I think it does clean up the dial just a little bit, which might also explain why they blacked out the counterweight on the second hand this time just to keep it from being confused with the white airplane of the GMT hand. The text on the dial has also been reduced. Now it's just the Citizen, ProMaster, and EcoDrive logos. Now, I think it's obvious that this is a pretty busy dial. I mean, most pilot watches with one of these slide rulers are. It's just kind of inherent in the design. So I think these kind of watches are definitely an acquired taste, yet it's still a very effective, very usable, and very original design which is what people really love about the Nighthawk, and this new version continues that tradition. Overall, I think Citizen did a pretty good job with this refresh. In some ways, I think the changes to the exterior really help modernize the design, whereas it seems like the changes to the dial are more about streamlining and just cleaning it up a bit. Now, typically, I do like visually interesting and kind of busier dials, but I have to admit that every time I looked at the original Nighthawk, I had to take a minute just to really take it all in. Whereas here, I never really had to. The basic idea and the basic footprint of the watch are still the same. 
Yet it seems like Citizen was able to separate out the chaos and then keep it focused on the outer edge, while leaving the center a slightly more functional timepiece. Now, moving on to the loom. And, you know, people always swear that Seiko is the king of loom when it comes to Japanese watches. But I'm starting to think that more people should give Citizen a second look, as this is just one more Citizen that I've seen that has really great loom. It has that light blue loom that Citizen is known for, and overall looks great. I mean, I wish the second hand had some, but I really like this loomed Flieger crosshair look. So in terms of longevity, this goes toe to toe with two great divers, one of which is my Seiko Turtle. I'm not sure how it compares to the original, but for a non-diver, this is really good. Now, according to Citizen, this uses the same movement as the original. So if you are familiar with that original Nighthawk, there really shouldn't be any surprises here. Now, it's a solar-powered quartz movement. So as long as you occasionally expose it to light, it should just keep going on and on for a decade or two. Now, as I said, this is one with a GMT functionality that you can independently advance the hour hand, while everything else just keeps going. So in order to do that, you just pull the crown out to its first position. Then just turn it clockwise, and the hour hand should jump in one hour increments. Now, there is one downside to this movement, but it's one it shares with a lot of other GMT movements at this price, which is that you can only move that hour hand forward and not backward. So it's not ideal if you're traveling west, but it is doable and you still get a quick set date. It's also worth pointing out that the date is tied to the hour hand and not the GMT. Lastly, we have the strap, which is this green leather pilot style strap with yellow stitching. Now it is a little stiff at first, but overall a pretty good strap and probably the best one I've seen from Citizen yet. Style wise, I think it works perfectly with the watch. The green seems to pair nicely with the black dial and bezel, while the yellow stitching matches the highlights on the dial. Now the strap is just genuine leather, but overall feels pretty good and has a great buckle and some nice size keepers. I don't often say this about a stock strap, but this is one I'd keep on it until it wears out. Now, just to be clear, Citizen isn't referring to these as the Nighthawk 2.0s. That's a nickname that I've come up with just to differentiate them from the originals, which may or may not be discontinued. At this point, I'm really not sure about that. When it comes to value, like all new releases, there isn't a lot here. Right now, they're currently going for around 300 to 400 bucks, which isn't really great compared to the original versions you can still find from two to three. However, as more people know about these and more become available, I'm hoping the price drops. And hopefully in a year, you can start finding them in the low twos, but we'll have to wait and see about that. And if they ever get to that point, they are definitely worth checking out. Now, of course, I wish it had a sapphire crystal, and I think you could say that about a lot of watches by Citizen. But otherwise, it's a pretty cool and highly functional GMT Pilots watch, not to mention extremely reliable with that solar eco drive movement. Design-wise, I think these are cooler than the originals, but I think they've lost a bit of their originality, as well as I don't think they're going to be quite as iconic. The original has a very classic tool watch look, while well, these feel a bit more modern and a bit more trendy. And whether or not that's a good thing is kind of up to you. But let me know what you think about the Citizen Nighthawk 2.0 down below, or if you can think of any other watches by Citizen I should take a look at, let me know as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and until next time.